I want to talk a little bit about Felix Merpt. Now, Felix was a puppeteer or a marionette? I don't know the correct term, but you designed for a couple of shows for his. Did I you know? did, yes. Wojtzeck or Felix, show? Felix was a great artist. I mean, uh, marionette or puppet maker, I mean, I think marionette refers specifically to puppets with strings. Right. And puppets can, is a more general term, which can mean uh, handheld puppets, or uh, and there are many varieties of different kinds of puppets. And Felix uh, knew that complete uh, range of puppet uh, forms from from those Taiwanese uh, silhouette puppets that work on sticks. You know what I mean? And they, you know, you can, you know, they're done in Om Chinois. You know, like a Silhouette or um, uh, marionettes, uh, handheld, I mean, you name it. I mean, he was a master of all those forms. And um, he, I first knew him as a set builder. Right. He, a set builder because he was also very handy. Uh, he was a great carpenter. And Felix's puppets in Wojtzeck, I w had one operator for each one, right? Yes. The operator was in black. And yes. walked the that's right the puppet around. Well, they weren't always in black, but I mean they were uh, they were costumed. No, the operator was in black. No, the operators were costumed. Oh, okay. I can give you an example. I did three shows with him and Jean Herbier. He was a director of the French section of the National Art Center at the time. Uh, this is in the late seventies, early eighties, whatever. And Jean Herbier was uh, was really the the man who chose the Bruckner and chose. You know, he wrote one of them we, we did, which is called De la Manipulation de Dieu, about God, about the manipulation of God. It was it's an interesting script. Uh, it had to do with Orthodox religion and everything. But what a subject for a designer! I mean, the the. the you know, it was like the complete canonization of St. Peter's. You know, I mean, I just, I just, j'ai mille paquets, you know what I mean? I put the whole, put everything I had in, in it. All my Catholic stuff, I dragged it out. But the, the idea was that you worked with, these were puppet shows, basically. But they had a, a normal dimension in that the manipulators were in full view of the audience and were also costume, not to be in black so that you're trying to say forget the manipulator, you know what I mean? The manipulators were right out there. And in Wojtzeck, they were costumed as, um, they were costumed as young uh, privates in a, some kind of Central European army. Like maybe we're talking about the light infantry of the Austro-Hungarian Empire or something, or where did where did Bruckner live? Germany, right? Germany. So it was, and the setting was as if they were performing a play about Wojtzeck and Marie and her murder and their passion and all that for a group, of, for four noblemen who were sitting in a kind of a lodge, kind of a decorated royal box that was up above them you could see them, right. the nobles. And then you had these six manipulators, right? And they did a lot of research to get a uniform for them. It was a gray uniform, but it had a certain kind of mandarin collar and a certain kind of epaulette, and you know what I mean? It was, it was a researched uh, uniform of the period, and that's what, how the manip... So the manipulators had a role. They weren't like, uh, you should forget them, you know? Like, they definitely were, were into it. The other one, Manipulation de Dieu, uh, they were dressed as um, acolytes on, a, on an altar at an ordination ceremony for... A, so they were had a, basically a surplus in Sutan kind of thing, you know what I mean? It, but they were religious figures and there was much smoke and much incense and much, you know, it was, God, it was wonderful. And what was the other? Oh, yeah. Then, then we did a Strindberg. And did Felix make the puppets? Felix made all the puppets for every one of those shows. And what were they made of? Oh, 
God, some were carved wood. The heads were very important. Uh, and he always did the heads himself. And they were often carved, uh, carved. Um, but then some other characters were cast uh, in fiberglass and, you know, there were, there were various techniques used. Um, uh, yes, they were, you know, they were the complete array of techniques, you know, and they, they had a great facility, they still do, at the National Art Center, Ottawa, and they set them up in an atelier there to create the puppets for these shows, you know, and he had some of the guys that manipulated also worked with him on the execution. There's a guy from here, Michael Rudder, actor from here, Montreal, was in yep. at least two of those shows. Yep. A guy called Richard Pochinko, who's dead now. He was in a couple of them, too. And, and I don't know whether puppets and marionettes have sort of been marginalized because they've been replaced. You know, there's Ronnie Burkett, but have they been marginalized because of so much uh, computer-generated effects, of so much digital creation that the kind of creating of uh, two-dimensional life that we play with has moved into electronic forms. I suppose. And the theater has just said goodbye to that medium, really. I suppose. It's great pity. Uh, but, you know, there's still the uh, an accountable popularity of, like, the Sesame Street characters, yeah. which is ongoing. I mean, as strong now as it ever was, I think. So maybe it's premature to sound the death knell of puppetry. I mean, I hope not. It's an odd thing for a designer like me to get involved in because it's, it's not my primary contribution. I mean, I don't make puppets, but I, I did drawings for their clothes, for example, how they should maybe be dressed. And I designed the setting for the whole thing too. Right. So I found a role you know, in, in puppet shows.